Hello, today we'll be going through practice questions 1 to 10 for the AWS Solutions Architect Associate exam. Let's begin. A company needs the ability to analyze the log files of its proprietary application. The logs are stored in JSON format in an Amazon S3 bucket. Queries will be simple and will run on demand. A solutions architect needs to perform the analysis with minimal changes to the existing architecture. What should the solutions architect do to meet these requirements with the least amount of operational overhead? The correct answer is C. Use Amazon Athena directly with Amazon S3 to run the queries as needed. Athena can query JSON data in S3 using SQL without moving the data or setting up infrastructure. It's serverless and fits best when queries are simple and on demand. Why do the options are incorrect? A. Amazon Redshift. This requires extracting and loading the logs into Redshift, adding ETL and maintenance overhead. B. Amazon CloudWatch Logs. This needs the logs to be ingested into CloudWatch first, which is not where they're currently stored. That changes the architecture and adds cost. D. AWS Glue plus EMR Spark. This introduces cluster management and more setup complexity, which isn't necessary for simple, occasional queries. Therefore, the correct answer is C. An application runs on an Amazon EC2 instance in a VPC. The application processes logs that are stored in an Amazon S3 bucket. The EC2 instance needs to access the S3 bucket without connectivity to the internet. Which solution will provide private network connectivity to Amazon S3? The correct answer is A. Create a gateway VPC endpoint to the S3 bucket. A gateway VPC endpoint allows private connectivity between your VPC and Amazon S3 without needing an internet gateway, NAT device, or VPN connection. This enables the EC2 instance to access the S3 bucket directly over the AWS network, which is exactly what is needed here. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Stream the logs to Amazon CloudWatch logs. This changes the architecture. The requirement is for the EC2 instance to access S3 directly, not to send data through CloudWatch. C. Create an instance profile on Amazon EC2. An instance profile only grants IAM permissions. It does not provide network connectivity. Without internet access or a VPC endpoint, the instance cannot reach S3. D. Create an Amazon API Gateway API with a private link. API Gateway is not used to provide direct connectivity to S3. It would add unnecessary complexity and still wouldn't solve the basic private connectivity requirement. Therefore, the correct answer is A. A company is hosting a web application on AWS using a single Amazon EC2 instance that stores user uploaded documents in an Amazon EBS volume. For better scalability and availability, the company duplicated the architecture and created a second EC2 instance and EBS volume in another availability zone, placing both behind an application load balancer. After completing this change, users reported that each time they refreshed the website, they could see one subset of their documents or the other, but never all of the documents at the same time. What should a solutions architect propose to ensure users see all of the documents at once? The correct answer is C. Copy the data from both EBS volumes to Amazon EFS. Modify the application to save new documents to Amazon EFS. Amazon EBS volumes are tied to a single instance and AZ. When you scale to multiple instances across AZs, each EBS volume only contains its own subset of files. The correct solution for shared storage across multiple instances and AZs is Amazon EFS, which provides a scalable, fully managed network file system accessible by all EC2 instances and the VPC at the same time. This ensures all users see all documents regardless of which backend instance the load balancer routes them to. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Copy the data so both EBS volumes contain all the documents. This only gives a temporary sync. It doesn't solve the ongoing issue of new uploads being isolated to one volume. B. Configure the application load balancer to direct a user to the server with the documents. This creates sticky sessions but doesn't scale properly and fails if that instance goes down. Users would still not see all documents at once. D. Configure the application load balancer to send the request to both servers. An ALB does not replicate requests to multiple targets. Even if it did, the problem is storage synchronization, not request routing. Therefore, the correct answer is C. A company has an application that ingests incoming messages. 
dozens of other applications and microservices then quickly consume these messages. The number of messages varies drastically and sometimes increases suddenly to 100,000 each second. The company wants to decouple the solution and increase scalability. Which solution meets these requirements? The correct answer is D. Publish the messages to an Amazon Simple Notification Service topic with multiple Amazon Simple Queue service subscriptions. Configure the consumer applications to process the messages from the queues. This solution decouples producers and consumers, scales automatically, and allows many consumers to independently process the same message stream. SNS fans out messages to multiple SQS queues, and each application or microservice can consume from its own queue at its own pace. This pattern is highly scalable and can handle sudden spikes in message volume. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Persist the messages to Amazon Kinesis Data Analytics. Kinesis Data Analytics is for real-time analysis, not for serving as a message broker for dozens of consumers. It doesn't address the fan-out requirement. B. Deploy ingestion on EC2 autoscaling. Scaling EC2 instances on CPU doesn't solve the fundamental issue of decoupling and message distribution to many consumers. It also adds unnecessary operational overhead. C. Write to Amazon Kinesis data streams with a single shard. A single shard cannot handle sudden spikes like 100,000 messages per second. Scaling requires multiple shards, and DynamoDB is not necessary here. Consumers need the raw messages, not a database lookup. Therefore, the correct answer is D. A company is running an SMB file server in its data center. The file server stores large files that are accessed frequently for the first few days after the files are created. After 7 days, the files are rarely accessed. The total data size is increasing and is close to the company's total storage capacity. A solutions architect must increase the company's available storage space without losing low latency access to the most recently accessed files. The solutions architect must also provide file lifecycle management to avoid future storage issues. Which solution will meet these requirements? The correct answer is B. Create an Amazon S3 file gateway to extend the company's storage space. Create an S3 lifecycle policy to transition the data to S3 Glacier Deep Archive after 7 days. An Amazon S3 file gateway presents an SMB interface to users while storing files in Amazon S3. Recently accessed files are cached locally for low latency access, while older files remain in S3. By adding an S3 lifecycle policy, files can automatically transition to cheaper storage classes after 7 days. This approach solves the storage capacity issue, preserves low latency access to hot data, and provides lifecycle management for long-term scalability. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Use AWS DataSync. DataSync copies files but does not extend on-premises storage seamlessly. Users will still run into capacity issues locally and it doesn't provide automatic lifecycle management. C. Amazon FSx for Windows File Server. FSx provides a managed SMB file system but does not automatically handle file lifecycle management or offload to cheaper storage tiers. It also does not directly solve the storage capacity limitation long term. D. Install a utility on each user's computer to access Amazon S3. This changes their user workflow significantly and requires training users to directly interact with S3. It also does not provide seamless SMB compatibility. Therefore, the correct answer is B. A company has an application that runs on Amazon EC2 instances and uses an Amazon Aurora database. The EC2 instances connect to the database by using usernames and passwords that are stored locally in a file. The company wants to minimize the operational overhead of credential management. What should a solutions architect do to accomplish this goal? The correct answer is A. Use AWS Secrets Manager. Turn on automatic rotation. AWS Secrets Manager is designed specifically for managing secrets like database credentials. It integrates natively with Amazon Aurora, supports automatic credential rotation, and allows applications to securely retrieve credentials via API calls. This eliminates the need to manually store or rotate passwords, minimizing operational overhead. Why the other options are incorrect? B. AWS Systems Manager Parameter Store Parameter Store can securely store credentials, but automatic rotation is not natively supported for Aurora credentials. It would require additional setup with Lambda, increasing operational overhead compared to Secrets Manager. C. Amazon S3 with KMS encryption. 
Storing credentials in S3, even encrypted, still leaves you with manual rotation and additional complexity. This does not reduce operational overhead effectively. D. Encrypted EBS volumes. Encrypting the storage location of credentials doesn't solve the credential management issue. It only protects the file at rest, not the credential lifecycle. Therefore, the correct answer is A. A company performs monthly maintenance on its AWS infrastructure. During these maintenance activities, the company needs to rotate the credentials for its Amazon RDS for MySQL databases across multiple AWS regions. Which solution will meet these requirements with the least operational overhead? The correct answer is A. Store the credentials as secrets in AWS Secrets Manager. Use multi-region secret replication for the required regions. Configure Secrets Manager to rotate the secrets on a schedule. AWS Secrets Manager is purpose-built for managing and rotating credentials, including Amazon RDS credentials. It now supports multi-region secret replication, which makes it easy to replicate secrets across regions with minimal effort. Automatic rotation integrates directly with RDS for MySQL, so credentials can be rotated on a schedule without custom code. This is the lowest operational overhead solution. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Systems Manager Parameter Store Parameter Store can store secrets, but it does not support multi-region secret replication natively, and rotation requires extra custom automation, has more overhead than Secrets Manager. C. Amazon S3 with Event Bridge and Lambda Storing credentials in S3 is insecure and requires building custom rotation logic with Lambda and Event Bridge, much more operational burden. D. KMS plus DynamoDB Global Table plus Lambda. This is a highly complex, custom solution that requires significant operational management. It's unnecessary when Secrets Manager already provides built-in multi-region replication and rotation. Therefore, the correct answer is A. A company runs an e-commerce application on Amazon EC2 instances behind an application load balancer. The instances run in an Amazon EC2 auto-scaling group across multiple availability zones. The auto-scaling group scales based on CPU utilization metrics. The e-commerce application stores the transaction data in a MySQL 8.0 database that is hosted on a large EC2 instance. The database's performance degrades quickly as application load increases. The application handles more read requests than write transactions. The company wants a solution that will automatically scale the database to meet the demand of unpredictable read workloads while maintaining high availability. Which solution will meet these requirements? The correct answer is C. Use Amazon Aurora with a multi-AZ deployment. Configure Aurora auto-scaling with Aurora replicas. Aurora is fully managed, highly available, and compatible with MySQL 8.0. It supports Aurora replicas that can automatically scale based on read workload. Aurora auto-scaling ensures that replicas are added or removed dynamically as demand changes, giving the application low latency read performance and high availability across multiple AZs. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Amazon Redshift Redshift is a data warehouse optimized for analytics, not for OLTP like e-commerce, not suitable for this use case. B. Amazon RDS Single AZ with readers A single AZ deployment lacks high availability. If the AZ fails, the database becomes unavailable. Also, RDS does not provide automatic scaling of read replicas like Aurora does. D. Amazon Elastic Cache for Memcached while caching can reduce read pressure, it does not solve database scaling or high availability for transactional data. It's a complementary solution, not a replacement for scaling the database. Therefore, the correct answer is C. A company recently migrated to AWS and wants to implement a solution to protect the traffic that flows in and out of the production VPC. The company had an inspection server in its on-premises data center. The inspection server performed specific operations such as traffic flow inspection and traffic filtering. The company wants to have the same functionalities in the AWS cloud. Which solution will meet these requirements? The correct answer is C. Use AWS Network Firewall to create the required rules for traffic inspection and traffic filtering for the production VPC. AWS Network Firewall is a managed service that provides stateful traffic inspection, filtering, and intrusion prevention within a VPC. It is the closest equivalent to an on-premises inspection server, allowing you to define rules to control both inbound and outbound traffic at the VPC level. 
This directly meets the requirement of replicating the existing inspection and filtering functionality in the AWS cloud. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Amazon Guard Duty. Guard Duty is a threat detection service. It analyzes AWS logs for suspicious activity, but it does not perform inline traffic inspection or filtering. B. Traffic Mirroring. Traffic mirroring captures and copies network traffic to monitoring tools, but it does not perform filtering or enforcement. It's useful for analysis, but not for real-time protection. D. AWS Firewall Manager. Firewall Manager is a centralized management tool for deploying firewall policies across accounts and VPCs. It does not itself perform traffic inspection or filtering. It's more for governance and policy enforcement using other services like Network Firewall or WAF. Therefore, the correct answer is C. A company is implementing a new business application. The application runs on two Amazon EC2 instances and uses an Amazon S3 bucket for document storage. A solutions architect needs to ensure that the EC2 instances can access the S3 bucket. What should the solutions architect do to meet this requirement? The correct answer is A. Create an IAM role that grants access to the S3 bucket. Attach the role to the EC2 instances. The best practice in AWS is to use IAM roles for granting EC2 instances access to AWS services. By attaching an instance profile with the IAM role to the EC2 instances, temporary credentials are automatically provided to the applications running on the instances, removing the need to manage static credentials. Why the other options are incorrect? B. IAM policy attached to EC2 instances. You cannot directly attach an IAM policy to an EC2 instance. Policies must be attached to IAM roles, groups, or users. C. IAM group. IAM groups are only for organizing IAM users. They cannot be attached to EC2 instances. D. IAM user. Attaching long-term credentials from an IAM user to EC2 instances is not secure and requires manual credential management. This goes against best practices. Therefore, the correct answer is A. We have come to the end of today's video. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Goodbye.